Welcome to the American News. I'm your anchor, there was Our top story today is that maybe this is, might be the statistically, like if you give a quantitative value to it, the best day in my life. I turned in my master's thesis, which basically means that, yeah, I'm, bas I'm a master of computer science now. Secondly, at work, because I already work full time, how else am I going to actually pay for my Margo record addiction? I've turned in some great deal of work and my boss is fucking happy with me and everyone was like so happy with my work and when you work hard towards something and you actually get recognition for it, it feels fucking good. So I'm a master of computer science now, I'm also doing fucking fantastic at my work, got plenty of also a good paycheck from that and then I come home after all of that and I turn on the news and what do I see? I see these news and I was like man just statistically this is gonna be one of the best days of my life. But how could this actually be? What what are these news? Well, first off, uh, some changes to Magia Stone packs. Like, okay, maybe 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 this is not actually a part of that news that I said earlier, um, because this really doesn't doesn't actually matter. Like, I don't think anyone really cares about it that much. So here's the thing about these the, the changes to the Magia Stone Burgess packs is that some of the packs got a tiny bit cheaper. And when I mean a tiny bit, I mean it went from 490 yen to 480 yen, which is like 10 cents. So some of the, one of the, like that pack got 10 cents cheaper, but you also get one stone less for it. Who the fuck cares? What? Uh, the the basic pack got got 40 cents more expensive, but you get three more stones for it. The Magia Pass got 10 cents more cheap, like 10 cents cheap, but you get the same stuff from it. Uh, like that pack over here, oh, that big pack got 300 cents, which is like three bucks uh, more expensive. But you also get like a bunch more gems for like, okay, wh what does it actually matter? Like some of these went up and down and overall it's basically the same. They're like really tiny adjustments. If anyone, if anyone has any negative or positive opinions, just any opinions about these changes at all, just don't listen to them because this doesn't fucking matter. This really doesn't fucking matter in any sense. The prices have changed so, f like so, t in such a tiny way. With the amount of gems you get also changing in such a tiny way that it's basically the same. It's basically the same. Okay, nothing has changed overall. We didn't even need to talk about this. Next up, darkness. Oh, did you guys like dark, dark, bloody nightmare? It's the dark bag. It's like okay, it's, it's just a bag. No one, it, no one should probably buy this unless. Okay, maybe not entirely no one, but if you have like a day one account, you might want to buy this just to get some uh, <clears throat> some SE stones maybe. But if you're a day two account, oh, maybe that maybe at that point you probably don't care about this uh, anymore. I mean like a, an, an account that's two days old. Like if you have made this account two days ago and you're watching this video, it's maybe the first news video you've ever seen, and you've made your account two days ago, it's probably already too late to buy this back and actually be efficient. You might instead just roll for the gacha instead and you're probably gonna get more out of your uh, uh, stones. Next up, there's a dark gacha. So there's two types of gacha. First on this is the one where you pay 150 paid stones. They have to be paid stones. And you get one of these four characters. So you either get Mikage, which is great. You get Kushu, which is great. Or you get a bad character. So either Mikage, Kushu or a bad character. Those are your uh, three choices for this. So Mikage, Kushu, bad characters. That's all you can get, 150 paid stones, is that worth it? If you are already paying for the game, like if you're already whaling or being a dolphin, then maybe you care about this. I'm already paying, but only in a, in a really small amount. Like, I'm a fish, basically. And for a fish, this might not be worth it. Like I, I don't know if I'm gonna do this, probably not, to be honest. Uh, but keep that in mind, that if you are dolphining, this might actually be an interesting way of uh, using that. Next up, the regular gacha. This is the other part of this gacha where, okay, you have this, you also have a dark type gacha, but for this dark type gacha, it's a normal gacha. But for this normal gacha, you can only roll dark type characters. Basically, all the best characters in the game, and none of the terrible characters, only the best characters in the game, are gonna be in this uh, gacha. Uh, the only characters that you should care about are in this gacha. So, only dark type characters, and more importantly, 
not only can you only get dark type uh, characters when you get a rate up character that rate up character will be either of these four so once again either Mikael Koshu or a bad character uh, are going to be your choices for when you get a rate up character so if you have a rather new account and you really like dark type if you really like the best type in the game then this might actually be a good choice because you might get you might get like 50 50 chance to get a really good character so this might actually be worth it uh, in a sense next up the actual reason why we're all here and the reason why I was so happy about this announcement is this fucking dark Kanagi. So uh, I followed the story of course uh, for a while and this is a character that we knew was going to happen I think about maybe a year ago? Maybe 9 months ago? Like somewhere between 9 to 12 months ago. Uh, I don't quite remember when this story with this came out but yeah it's dark Kanagi. If you want to know the story I'm gonna tell you guys the story because it's gonna this is a character, you see it right there. Uh, so that was this point where there was a lot of despair and impurity uh, going through Kanagi and Mitama as well, he's in there. And they were like, hey, instead of uh, cleansing our soul gem as we usually do, maybe even doppling, I don't know if doppel system was active at the time, uh, because this is like late in the story, and later in the story the doppel system actually got deactivated. But the point is, um, they were like, hey, instead of actually trying to get rid of these impurities, how about we take these impurities and we let them fester? and infest our souls and this is basically what the darkness versions are of Kanagi and Mitama it's basically uh, them being half witch so like half witch at this point which is like wow that's crazy right and I'm a fucking sucker for these kinds of units right I absolutely fucking you, you, you could already tell from earlier that I really like dark darkness right I, I like kind of stuff so this is kind of the stuff that is right up my alley being like hey these are like half witches basically at this point so what is the actual unit like? You can already see four blast discs, but guess what? And this is the important part. Three of those blast discs are in the same direction. And they have, a, and this Zion Kanji has a really high amount of attack as an attacker type as well, which means that Dark Kanagi seems to be a better Ashley. Isn't that fucking great? Because then the, the, the reason why you play Ashley is uh, either you want to have a nice fun time in mirrors, but we get to that in a second. But more importantly, you play uh, Ashley as your main support, uh, also in in your support selection. Uh, you put Ashley on your all support, uh, and the reason why you do that is because you want to farm PVE quests. When when you farm event currency, you, there's an event going. You're like, oh, I want to farm as much event currency as possible. You put Ashley on there. Why? Because four blasts are really fast. Some people have said that, oh, maybe infinite Iroha will be really fast for farming, but only if you can, if it actually takes more than one uh, round to kill a wave. Let's say, for example, you fight against a boss as part of your farming routine. You're on a quest where there is a boss. Yeah, then maybe infinite Iroha can be a good choice. But if you're not going to fight against the boss, or let's say you even fight against a boss that dies on turn one anyway, you don't need Infinite Iroha, because the Infinite Iroha on turn one does absolutely fuck all and is dead weight for one turn. Uh, and if you instead on that turn could kill all the enemies, that's way fucking faster. And then after that, sure, you got the really fast Magia animation, which gets instantly skipped. But if you already had the fast turn one, then a fast turn two overall is going to be faster. And it's also going to be more reliable uh, because with Infinite Iroha, let's say there's four enemies on wave one of a farming quest and Infinite Iroha gets Excel Excel charge and you don't clear wave one and then she uses a fucking doppel on wave one against a single enemy. How fucking shit is that? So Infinite Iroha for farming can be pretty bad depending on the quest. It really depends on the quest. But with four blasts, with four blasts, you can absolutely never go your, or go wrong. You're always gonna have a great time. With four blasts, four blasts are always gonna be good, okay? Which is why Ashley, in my opinion, is still the best farming character, even ahead of Infinite Iroha. But now, what was the one downside of Ashley? Well, she has two charge, uh, two blasts in one direction and two charges in the other direction. Like one going straight up, the other one going sideways. Which means that if you have a quest with like uh, a lot of different, a lot of enemies on the enemy side of the field, depending on what blast directions you rolled, you might just not be able to defeat all the enemies, uh, just because you got like two sideways and one upwards downwards. 
and you just can't clear all the enemies with that configuration. But with three sideways, or just generally with three in the same direction, you're guaranteed to be able to hit every single enemy on the entire field. Meaning that three in the same direction, oh, it's way fucking better. You're guaranteed to be able to hit every single enemy uh, if you hit if you roll those three. And if you have two Dark Kanagi, let's say if you have, you have a support Dark Kanagi and your own Dark Kanagi, that's six blasts this going in the same direction and only two blasts this in the pool going the other direction. You are very likely to be able to hit every single enemy on the entire field. Worst case scenario, you're still getting uh, two in the same direction and one in the other direction, which is what Ashley gets anyway. So best case, she's better than Ashley. Worst case, she's as good as Ashley. Sounds like an improvement to me. And what does she, else does she actually do? Like the rest of her kit doesn't actually matter that much because the only thing that matters uh, for farming is the blast discs. And that's basically the way it is. Like the only thing that matters for farming is blast discs because when you're farming, you're gonna one-shot enemies anyway. At least that's how the way, that's how you should farm. You should farm in a way where you one-shot all enemies. When you one-shot all enemies, it doesn't matter what the rest of your kit does. The only thing that matters is how many blast discs in the same direction do you have. But let's actually talk about the rest of her kit just very quickly. This is gonna be extremely fucking fast. Um, her connect is blast damage up and dark attack up because of Torsus dark attack up. Oh, darkness. Uh, it, her magia is attribute strength from damage to a single enemy. It also gives blast damage up, attack up, and ignore defense to self. Sadly, only to self, but it does last for three turns. So blast attack up and ignore, ignore defense to self, which is fucking incredible in terms of damage. But it's on the, the magia, and you're probably gonna care a bunch about magia on a blast use a good seller like that. Next up, it also gives defense down to enemy and provoke to self. The provoke to self looks a bit weird, but we're gonna see why that is the case in a second. Because, oh, first off, the double, by the way, upgrades her attack up to a dark attack up, which is actually a better effect, even though in most cases it does the same, but in some cases it's better. Uh, and it also gives the ignore defense, it gets increased to five turns, probably the double, uh, the blast damage up also to five turns, I don't know. But the important part is, the active gives, oh god, this is a long one, you can kind of see this is almost looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh card description. Okay, this looks like maybe one-tenth of a Yu-Gi-Oh card description in length, but yeah. So it, the active does attack up at critical HP, defense up at critical HP, and bury at 10,000. And you're like, but what do th isn't that a really terrible effect, attack up uh, and defense up at critical HP? I need to be at critical HP first, right? And I'm not going to be at critical HP, especially if I get a barrier. Well, the last piece right here is, is, the, is the fucking Yuna effect. You instantly destroy 80% of your HP. You instantly put yourself on 20% HP if you use this active, so you immediately get the uh, critical effect and then you have 10,000 berry on top of that. And now you see why this provoke, because either you have the barrier at this point still active, it lasts for five turns by the way, it's terrifying, it lasts for five fucking turns. So either you still have the barrier active and you absorb some damage, or you don't have the barrier active and you wanna get to critical HP, which is very dangerous, but, but you can put yourself on critical HP if you're not currently on critical HP by using your provoke. Uh, so it's incredibly dangerous, but it's a fucking good damage, right? But if you do the active and you don't have any heals, you don't have any regenerate, you can't play any regeneration HP uh, if she's on the field because she wants to stay in critical HP. But yeah, you use this active and basically just like you know, you have a crap ton of fucking attack with barrier. Oh, fucking great. And with the defense, you're gonna probably stay in barrier for a while. Oh, isn't that great? Her passive is, well, the first passive is attack up at critical HP, because of course it fucking is. Uh, together with defense of critical HP, also for five turns. So you start the battle with two different types of attack up and defense up at critical HP uh, buffs for five turns. <laughs> Isn't that fucking great? And then she also gets anti-evade for five turns. So uh, if you're playing mirrors, and this is what I want to say, if you're playing mirrors, you use this active on turn one to basically have infinite attack and defense and barrier, so you, so you could survive if the enemy hits you. But you don't need to, because with so much attack, you're gonna just kill the enemy. But what if the enemy evades? They're not going to, because you have anti-evade passively, passively for five turns, meaning that if you don't have Aniyachi, Aniyachi is probably still the better choice because of variable, but if you don't have Aniyachi and you wanna be able to def absolutely fucking destroy mirrors, ranked and normal, 
I mean, ranked not for rating, but just to just win, if you want to just win, this sounds like a good fucking joke, because just anti-evade, you don't need to worry about evade, and, and this is the important part, the problem that Ashley had in Mirrors is because the different types of blast disc means you can't hit every single enemy in mirrors on turn one. But with three blasters in the same direction, just like Aniyatio, you can hit every enemy no matter what uh, sort of formation they have. You can hit every single enemy. Fucking great. And, uh, okay, the, the final effect. So, so, so far we've had two different notes that give attack up and defense with a critical HP. And the final note gives attack up and defense with a critical HP because of course it fucking does. <laughs> did, you, did you guys think that anything else was going to happen in this fucking... So yeah, it gives attack up and defense with a critical HP because this is now the third, the third node on her SE that gives attack up and defense with a critical HP. And I fucking love it. I actually fucking love this. This is, this is fucking weird. I, I, I think this is... I mean, I think this character is fucking great, not just because he's kind of getting just hot as fuck, but also because he's a great fucking character, uh, both story-wise and gameplay-wise. So, I say if you don't have Aniyachi and you want to win Mirrors forever, this is the second batch, best choice probably. And outside of that, if you want to have a great support on your all slot, or just generally if you want to have really fucking good farming for PvE, this is also a really great choice. And even outside of that, with attribute strength and damage, you can still do a really good amount of damage against the Kimochi. The Kimochi that is right here, because this is also got announced. That's set to, damp to, to dampen your expectations a little bit. She's not going to out damage uh, other characters that have been released in the past that were full Kimochi DPS machines like Kush for example, I think Kush uh, and Rikaren, uh, like AoE magias that are at risk strength or AoE, AoE doublets that are magia strength are probably still going to way out damage uh, Dark Hanagi. So while she's an okay choice, a good choice for Dark Kimochi, uh, for this Kimochi, she's not going to be as good as actual uh, power damage machines on the doubles. Not to mention that she has four blast discs and one charger, so how the fuck are you going to get a topple unless she has like SE with blast MP, but even then Excelius is going to be better. So yeah, we have the light type Kimochi, which they, apparently they said like, hey, this Kimochi, as all the other ones, all the other Opal Kimochis has uh, shields against debuffs and ailments, so you can punch through those shields by bringing a lot of ailments, a lot of debuffs to punch through those shields. Uh, and then actually apply some debuffs and ailments, and then you use your attribute rank from the AoE doubles after that from like Kush or Ikran or whatever. So yeah, that's the strategy for this. And that's that. The only, the only other thing to worry to note is that Madoka has a birthday on the uh, 3rd of October, which by the way, the 3rd of October, Madoka, Madoka's birthday. Madoka's birthday is such an important date that is actually a national holiday where I live and I don't have to work on that day, which is actually true. Uh, Madoka's birthday is that important to my country. Uh, so yeah, you get this uh, memorial right here, 400 SP in the support point uh, shop. Here's the important part. Get this memorial immediately and equip it on someone. Not because it's good, it's not. It's just a very basic fucking memorial that no one cares about. But the important, important part is when you have this memorial equipped, you are able to participate in special missions. If you do 45 quests, like any 45 quests, um, or any quest 45 times with this memoria equipped, you get a 10 times gacha ticket. So get this memoria immediately, equip it on someone, run some 4 AP quests or whatever uh, 45 times and you immediately get a 10 times gacha ticket. Nice. That was that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I didn't talk about the Gacha Memorial. It's like attack up defensive and provoke. It's like, okay, whatever, who cares?